In trigonometry, obviously we're working with triangles, and triangles uh, can be right angled or not. And so what I'm gonna show you now, the sine rule, or sometimes called the sine law, is going to be something for non-right angle trigonometry. In other words, this works for triangles even if they're not right angled, which is really helpful, I think. Uh, so here we go. By the way, I just love this stupid meme. I know it's such a dumb meme, this doge meme, but I don't know why, it just always makes me laugh. Maybe I'm really silly, but there you go. Um, so we have our triangle, this generic triangle here, and I can name it whatever I want. In this case, I'm gonna name it A, B, and C. And because of that, um, that means this is the angle A, this is angle B, this is angle C. And if I've named it that way, then I know my sides. Remember this opposite to A is called side, little a here. Opposite to B is called little b, and opposite to C is called little c. Now we have a sine rule. Some people call it the sine law. It doesn't really matter, right? So sine rule or the sine law. How does this work? We have actually a trick for remembering these things. If these are here, the different angles, angle A, B, and C, and how things are related. We actually have a nice equation for this, and it says this. It says that A, so side A, that's this side length right here, divided by the sine of its angle. So in other words, sine A, uh, sorry, A over sine of capital A. Now this is really important, the distinction, because capital A, that is the, that's the angle, whereas this here is the side. And that goes the same way. So in other words, it goes A over sine A equals B over sine of B, the capital B, because that's the angle, which is also the same as side C over sine of angle C. This is how this works. This is sine law. What this really helps is that if you have um, so what you would do here is maybe you're given like this angle and you're given this side and you're given this angle and you're asked for that side. So the way you do this then, in order to do this, you have to know an angle and its opposite side. That's really important. Okay, so maybe that's like a little trick here. Look for, this is when you're looking for angles and their opposite sides. So something like this, or at least, or you have these. So this is when you're looking at, maybe I'll say look at. Maybe that's better instead of look for. So look at, whoops, just about to say four again. Look at angles and opposite sides. This I think is really important. So this right here, when you're actually working with this, then you're gonna use this. I'm gonna show you some examples in just a second here. But first I wanted to explain the other rule or law. The next one's called cosine rule, or otherwise known as the cosine law. So here we go, I've got my triangle. There it is, like this, like this. There we go. And I'm gonna draw it again. So again, I have my uh, A, I have B, I have C, whoops. I have B, and I have C. There we go. So the way cosine rule or cosine law works, it looks a little bit more complicated, but it's it's really important uh, basically to know something about, like in this case, we're gonna narrow down on this particular C here, in other words, this angle. And it's gonna tell you something about how this and this and this and this are related. So what it really does is it needs to know a side and an angle and its side are sort of on its own. It has to do with what we call side, angle, side. So we need to know a side and then its angle in the middle and then another side. And then what this tells you is how this opposite side here, in other words, the one that's opposite to the angle, uh, it tells you how these are related. So basically you can do cosine law for either side C or you can deal with it for angle C. So I'm gonna show you with the side. So the way this one works, if you're doing it with the side, it goes like this, it says C squared equals and now this one here uh, goes a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of angle c. This is the first version of cosine law or cosine rule. So this one here I think is pretty important here. So this one here tells you again that if you look at this, if you want to find out side c, so this one right here, and you've got to know its opposite angle. That's the angle that's going to go in here. And then you've got to know its neighboring sides. You've got to know the other side and the other side. So um, that's how you can find this side here. 
Now, I usually, uh, in practice, when I'm trying to solve a problem, I always try with sine law first because it's easier. And if that doesn't work, then I try with cos law, or the cosine rule or the cosine law. Now, you could also isolate for cosine c if you want. You can get that by itself. So if you want to cosine c by itself, just think very, very carefully and slowly about what you would do for algebra to actually solve this. To get cosine c on its own, I'd probably move the a squared over and the b squared over. So that would be c squared, and I would say minus a squared minus b squared. And then I would have to divide by minus 2ab. Now I've done a lot of the steps at once, but this is what it would be here. Now, if I want to clean it up a little bit, it turns out a minus here. That's the same thing as a minus in front, which changes the sign of everything. So the final version that we often use for this, we say that cosine of angle C is, in this case here, it'll make this in minus, it'll make this plus and plus, so it'll actually be A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AB. That was just to get rid of that minus, so we just propagated it on the top here. So this is another version of cosine law or cosine rule. So what does this do? This is in case you want to find this angle and you have all three sides. You see that? What if you're just given this side, this side, this side, and you want to know that angle, then you can do it, even if it's not right angled. A lot of people think, they say, oh, if I know this side, this side, and I want that one, I use Pythagoras, right? No, Pythagoras theorem only works for right angle triangles. This is for non-right angles, so it comes, it comes a little bit more complicated. You just got to deal with these equations. Now I want to take this equation here, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and I want to do a little bit more with it. Okay, so c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. Remember, this was for some sort of triangle that went like this, right? a, b, c, where this was side a, this is side b, this is side c. Just get used to naming them like this. That's how they work in general. Now what's really interesting is what if, I actually like showing this, so what if um, angle c equals 90 degrees. What, what happens then? Because I was talking about non-right angle, I just want to show you what happens. So if angle C is 90 degrees, so in other words, what if it went like this then? You know, this here was C, that was 90 degrees, and this is A and this is B. Let's just look at this equation right here. Well, let's just see how this works here. So we got A squared plus B squared minus 2AB. We have cosine of 90 degrees. That's what we would have to put in here, 90 degrees. And if uh, I haven't shown you yet how to do the videos, I haven't done the videos yet for this, but I'm going to, um, to show you how to actually figure that out. But if you're not sure for now, you can just say cos of 90. And you'll get an answer of, holy moly, you get zero. So hold on, that means that if this thing right here, if this thing is zero, zero times minus 2ab is also zero. Do you see that, that whole thing cancels out? So then I'm left with c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and nothing else. Doesn't that look like your friend Pythagoras theorem? So it turns out, I love this, I think it's really fun to see. So Pyth, Pythag, oh, I can't seem to spell today. Pythagoras theorem. I think that's really cool. So this is, this is this theorem here. So it just says that if this is a right angled one, then it collapses and becomes Pythagoras theorem. But what I like about this one, this works for any angle, whether it's right angle or not. I should have technically not called it non-right angle. I should just say all trigonometry, you know, not just for right angles. So this works for anything, just like the sine rule as well works for anything. But isn't that cool? So uh, this is how we can sort of deal with these things and have a little bit of fun with them. Uh, now I have a really bad joke to show you, the cosine rule or the cosine law. And it goes like this. What is a mathematician's favorite food? Cos law. Because <laughs> this is actually, uh, for those who don't know, this is called Cole's law. So we're making a play on Cos law. All right, when you have to explain a joke, it makes it even less funny. So let's uh, just keep going. So here we go. We can do an example of this. So for some non-right angles, let's calculate this. So we have a triangle, ABC. We have this side. We know this angle. We know this angle. Did you know if I wanted to, I could calculate this angle pretty easily, right? Because I know this plus this plus this is 180. And maybe that's what I care about, but let's just see what I need. I need to find uh, side AC. In other words, I need this piece right here. Now, if I want to really label things, I can label this one little a. I can label this one right here then as little c, because that's opposite to the c. That means opposite to angle b is called little b. So I really, I want to find this. This is what I want. 
Now I can use law of sines or law of cosines. Let's go back up and look at our different rules here. Law of sines says I need some angles and their opposite sides. In other words, I need to know at least one opposite side and its opposite angle. And let's take a look at this one because it turns out I think I have what I need here. I have just what I need. So let's take a look here and see if this makes sense. So I've got, uh, whoops, wrong page, there we go. So I want to find out B. If I want to find that out, then how do I do this? Well, I can use law of sines. Law of sines says I need to know a side and its opposite angle. And do you see how I have 12 and 39 degrees? So this I have, and then I have this angle and I want that side. So this screams sine law, I think. So I'm going to write it down. So that means I have B over sine B equals, uh, in this case, it'll be C over sine C. Now, I didn't need to know the A over sine A. It turns out I didn't need that. So I'm just going to use this one. This is how this one works. Even though you've got three things to choose from, just use two of them. So I've got B over sine B equals C over sine C. Why is this helpful? Well, take a look now. I want to get B by itself, right? I want B. B divided by sine of 58, hey, that I know, equals, let's see, what's C here? That's this one. That's 12. So 12 centimeters over sine 50, uh, sorry, sine of 39 degrees, of course. If that's the case, I can get B on its own. People call this cross multiplying. I just call it doing algebra. So I want B by itself. I want to get rid of this thing that's on the bottom. To get rid of something on the bottom, I multiply by both sides. Now remember, I don't want to undo this. Some people say, oh, don't you take the inverse sign? You only do that if you want to get at the angle, but I know the angle. I want to get rid of the whole thing at once. Now this whole thing at once is below the B. So because of that, I want to multiply by this whole thing. So I multiply both sides by sine 58. That'll make it cancel out on this side, and that'll mean it'll be pushed over here. So 12 times sine of 58 degrees, all that divided by sine of 39. Now this is really important to be careful then with your calculator and be careful with brackets. So I'm going to say then uh, I want to do, I'm going to take sine of 58 first. I'm going to take this top part here. Sine of 58, I press enter. I get some number. I take that and I multiply it by 12. Remember, always check that you're in the right mode. You're in degree mode, but I am. So I multiply that answer. So you see, I've just figured out the top. You might think, why does he do it so backwards? I'm just weird. You do it however you like, but this always works for me. So I like to do, you know, the more complicated looking thing, I like to deal with it first. So sine 58, and I took that thing, multiplied that by 12, and I've got this answer. I want to take this answer then and divide it by... In brackets, really important with the brackets, sine of 39, and close that bracket. So I've got to close the second one. And I get this answer here of 16.17. So I can say then that's B here. So B is 16, and let's just say that's pretty much 16 centimeters. It's technically 16.17 and so on, but it's approximately 16 centimeters. You see, that's how we can solve this. Now we can do another one as well. We can do uh, another example here. Here I have another triangle, A, B, C, and I've got a side and an angle and a side, and I want to find out A. In other words, I want, this so here's this one, this one right here is going to be B, and this one is C. Remember, they're opposites. So this is angle A, this is side A. I want to find this one. I want this. In order to do this, then, if I want to use law of sines, remember law of sines says uh, sine, uh, a side over a sine of an angle, I need to know an angle and its opposite side. I know this angle, I don't know that opposite side, so that doesn't work. And I know this side, but I don't know this angle, so that doesn't work. And I know this side, but I don't know that angle. So darn it, i got to use law of cosines. So in this case right here, law of cosines normally says, it's normally written like this, that c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. However, this works for any angles in any orientation. So if I want a on its own, I don't have to write it like this. It turns out I can rewrite it and say, all right, the one that I want, that's this one right here. So I'm going to put that one there and say this is a squared. And that's going to be, and this is how this works, because this thing works for any two, as long as you know, as long as you're looking at sort of either one of these when you know the sides here. So as long as you know those two other sides, if you know an angle, you can find its opposite side, or if you know a side, you can find its opposite angle. In this case, then, the way it works, it's going to go a squared equals, and it's going to be the other two, so b squared plus c squared, minus 2, and then bc, and so again, this goes ab, ab. So in this case, it's going to go bc, bc, 
times cos of the angle opposite to it. So that's going to be A. So maybe that seemed a little bit complicated, but that's how I can set it up. Worst case scenario, you can just rename them all. If you want to just rename it, you can say this is, I'm going to call this C, I'm going to call this A, I'm going to call this B, and then away I go. You can do that. Then you're going to be calculating C. I just want to show that you can use their own nomenclature if you want. Either way, here's how we can do it then. So we want A squared. Well, we want A. But A squared is going to be B squared, so that's 13 squared, plus C squared, which is 11 squared, minus 2 times 13 times 11, because that's B and C, times cosine of the angle A, which is 42 degrees. This is really important then to take your time with this. Okay, so um, maybe I'm going to figure out this piece. Do not do this squared plus this squared, and then take that answer and do minus 2. It's really important to see that there's like three terms here. There's this you got to deal with on its own. There's this, and then there's this, because they're all multiplied together. These are like three separate things you got to be careful with. So I could actually deal with this uh, first piece over here. I can deal with 13 squared plus 11 squared. Because uh, I know that 13 squared, what's that? That's 169, and 11 squared is 121. And I could say that's minus, and actually maybe I'll just start using my calculator here. So in this case right here, let's just double check. So I've got my 13 squared, and I've got my 11 squared. This right here, I could say that this piece right here, which I don't know why I did that with the calculator. You can easily do that by hand. So this one right here, that's that piece. But I also want to deal with the other piece. I also don't want to deal with the right side. So this piece right here, this is, I could say it's 290, or I can just leave it as this. What I want to deal with is this piece right here. So I want to deal with minus 2 times this times this times cos 42. There's a lot of ways of doing it, but I'm just going to say cos 42, enter. See, I'm going to do the most complicated thing first. I'm going to multiply that by 11. And I'm going to multiply that also by 13. I'm going to also multiply it by negative 2. Those are all the different numbers that are playing. So here it's minus 212. So I'm going to write that down. So minus 212.54, let's say. There we go. So then I can say, okay, great. And then I can actually deal with this. I can say then that 290, whoops, I don't know what happened there. 290 minus uh, 212.54. Point five four roughly. That's going to give me an answer. That's going to be a squared. But if I want a by itself, then I got to take the square root of that answer. So away I go, and I get an answer of eight point eight. So that's going to be what a is. So a equals roughly eight point eight, and that's going to be in centimeters because we have to use the right units. Now it's not exactly eight point eight; it's approximately. So I put that little thing. So again, here, the trick is just really go slow with calculating this. Take your time, but do deal with them as three separate entities, three separate terms. Remember, a term is something that's separated by a plus or a minus. In this case, you got this one term, you got this one term, and you got this term. And that's how you can deal with these really complicated looking uh, triangles. You can deal with them by either using a sine law or the cosine law.